stability of oxygen is critical to the way cancer cells grow and survive. We're truly in a revolutionary time for cancer care, and what Dr. Kalin and his collaborators discovered is absolutely transformative. This is all about the importance of understanding the basic biology of the human body, and it's only from that understanding that we can best attack cancer. So this marriage of basic science, clinical research, and patient care is what is so powerful about what we do here at Dana-Farber. We're all incredibly proud of Dr. Kalin and hopeful for the promise that this means for patients here and everywhere. Thank you. I'm, Bill, uh, and I, I forgot to actually put this in, but you should know that Bill is the Sidney Farber Professor of Medicine at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and, an HMI, and at Harvard Medical School, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And it's lovely to have the Dean of Harvard Medical School, George Daly, and the President of Brigham and Women's Hospital, Dr. Betsy Nabel, here to also say a few words. Thanks. Well, as, as the Dean of Harvard Medical School, as a fellow scientist and as a hematologist, uh, I could not be more proud of the scientific achievements that we're celebrating today. This discovery of how oxygen interacts with tissues is a powerful reminder for how important critical discoveries and how the most transformative therapies flow from the deepest understanding of basic mechanisms. They also underscore the power of clinical observations to inform basic discovery. So I've known Bill for a number of years now, and he is the consummate physician scientist. He's fiercely dedicated to rigor and excellence in both the laboratory and in the clinic. Bill Kalin is the finest that medicine has to offer, and it is a privilege to be here to offer my congratulations to Bill, to Peter, and Greg. Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm Betsy Nabel, president of Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, and on behalf of Brigham and Women's Hospital, I want to offer our congratulations to you, Bill, and to your family as well for your extraordinary accomplishments uh, and uh, achievements. I can say that as proudful part of the Dana-Farber Brigham and Women's Cancer Center, uh, we have great pride uh, in the scientific research, discovery, innovation that occurs here at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Uh, and that pride extends to taking those basic discoveries and translating them to new advances for patients who improve their lives on a daily basis. So, Bill, we're so proud of, of your extraordinary accomplishments. Um, as an aside, I'm a cardiovascular scientist, so you might say, well, what do the cardiovascular sciences have to do with oxygen and oxygen sensing? Well, actually, a lot. Uh, the discoveries made by Bill and his colleagues uh, have fundamentally defined how cells in the body sense oxygen and then how the cells then respond to either an abundance of oxygen or an absence of oxygen. And you can imagine that in heart and blood vessels, as in a heart attack, there's often an absence of oxygen. And so this oxygen sensing mechanism is critical for regulating blood vessel tone and is critical in the development of a heart attack and the treatment to a heart attack. So Bill's work has had broad application across many fields of medicine, heart and vascular disease, pulmonary disease, lung disease, kidney disease, and many other organ systems that we care for individuals who have those diseases day in and day out at Brigham Women's Hospital. So Bill's advances are cancer and way beyond. And for that, Bill, we're enormously grateful. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, uh, Bill, we, we also just on a very personal note, not only are you the consummate physician scientist, but you are an, a wonderful, amazing individual and human being. And we can't think of a more glorious thing happening to such a wonderful individual. And for that, we're very grateful and proud as well. Thank you. 
Thank you. And now I have the pleasure of introducing the star of the year, Bill Kalin. Thank, thank you very much, and thank you for those very kind words, and thank you for being here. Uh, I hope you're all having a nice day, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's not as nice as the day I'm having. So, <laughs> and, and on the way over here, I was teasing Lori Glimpshire because we just rolled out our new insignia this week for the Dana-Farber, and I said, way to do a new rollout. You know, this really will help with the, <laughs> the, 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 the branding. You know, I, I, I will confess, uh, like most scientists, and maybe all scientists, if they're being honest, I, I did occasionally allow myself to dream that maybe one day uh, this uh, would happen. Uh, now, I, I don't think that's necessarily the healthiest thing to do, so I try to ignore that most, most days and uh, try to completely not think about this and to try to think about my work. But when I was younger, uh, my late wife and I would, you know, sort of have fun together and talk about what would happen. What would it be like if you ever won this prize? And I, and I say that because I'm accepting this prize uh, partly on behalf of my late wife, who herself was a faculty member at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and the Brigham and Women's Hospital, and she was a pioneering uh, breast surgeon, and she was my best friend and, and hero and partner and everything. Uh, I did, and to be honest, there were a couple of years after I lost her that I thought, please, not, not a prize, because it would just be too bittersweet and it would be too crushing to, to receive such a wonderful recognition uh, without Carolyn. Uh, but I'm at a point now where I like to think she's smiling down and nodding and saying, yeah, I told you, I told you this was going to happen. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and I'm thrilled to share this with my son, uh, Tripp, who's here, uh, and uh, my daughter, uh, who is currently a graduate student at Oxford, so we've already FaceTimed. Uh, this morning, and so I, I accept this uh, partly on behalf of my, my family and my many friends who have supported me. Uh, you know, I also learned years ago that I've grown the fastest when I've been surrounded by people who were smarter than me and more knowledgeable than me and had better judgment than me. And so one of the best decisions I ever made uh, was to come to the Dana-Farber for my early training, and more importantly, when I had the opportunity to leave, my choice was to stay, because I wanted to be in a place where the people and the environment were going to make my work better. You know, science, especially today, is not done by an individual, it's done by uh, an ecosystem. Uh, and I have been aided countless times by generous collaborators, the endless stream of incredibly talented young people who have worked in my laboratory over the years, without whom this, these discoveries would not have been possible. Uh, I also want to highlight uh, David Livingston, who's a professor here at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. He's my, he's my mentor. Now, you'll notice I didn't say was my mentor. He is my mentor. He taught me how to be a scientist in the 80s and 90s, but he's, to this day, uh, one of the people I go to when I need uh, uh, sage advice. So there have been countless examples where my work has been made better, been made possible by the, the constant interactions, not only within the Dana-Farber, and the Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School, but this incredible biomedical ecosystem that's now developed uh, in, in Boston. So uh, I think there was a time when you were an athlete, you wanted to be in Sparta, and if, uh, and if, but I think if you want to do biomedical research, there aren't too many places that are any better uh, than Boston. And again, I, I'm just so thrilled to be able to share this prize with the many, many people who have helped me over the years and have made this uh, recognition possible. So thank you.